What is up everybody? This is your guy Cly and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be talking about the Inpet K61 65% mechanical gaming keyboard. And believe it or not, this is actually my third attempt at making this video. And I don't mean I've recorded this exact video three times, I mean over the course of maybe the past year, I've been trying to get this particular video made. Sort of. This all started back when I bought the original Inpet K61 for around $19 on Amazon. And as I was prepping to make that video, it disappeared. It was completely gone from Amazon, and I thought, well, if my viewers can't buy it, there's really no point in making this video. Cut to a few months later, and Inpet reaches out to me asking if I want to review the improved version of the K61. And as you can probably guess by the fact that it's sitting here, I said yes. And they were kind enough to send me one. And because of that, I will be marking this video as a paid promotion, because while they didn't pay me anything in particular to make this video, the keyboard can be seen as payment in kind, so I just want to cover all of my bases. That being said, you can tell they didn't pay me to make this video because I kind of dropped the ball after they sent me this one. Or more specifically, I dropped a screwdriver kit onto my audio recording laptop after this video was made, completely corrupting the hard drive and losing not only this review, but three or four others. After that, I decided to just put this on the back burner and it ended up getting lost in the shuffle. And that brings us to today, because recently Inpet reached out to me again, not asking where this video was, but to offer me the follow-up keyboard to the K61. And once again, I said yes. However, I want to get this review made before that one, so here we are. Inside the box, you receive the keyboard itself, the manual, a USB 2.0 cable with a Type-C connector, as well as a keycap puller. Now, like I said earlier, Inpet reached out to me asking if I wanted to cover the follow-up to the K61. But believe it or not, I'm not talking about the K62, which is a 65% membrane gaming keyboard, nor am I talking about the K63, which is a wireless only mechanical gaming keyboard. That's right, wireless only. There's no USB port on here, even for charging. Instead, it uses AAA batteries. I'm actually talking about the K611, which is another mechanical gaming keyboard that has three connectivity modes, those being wired, Bluetooth, and 2.4 gigahertz, as well as hot swap switches and this nice translucent shell. But that's for another video. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the K61, primarily the second version. Though I do also want to just take a quick look at the differences between version 1 and version 2. Now, overall, these are effectively identical. The only real differences come down to the fact that the original has the function layer printed on the top portion of the switches, and the updated edition has the function layer printed on the side. As such, I'm definitely going to be using this one when it comes to talking about the function layer. The other main difference between these two has to do with the switch choices. Now, in the case of the original K61, you had three different choices, those being linear, clicky, and tactile. In the case of the current version, you're able to choose between clicky and linear switches. Sort of. As of the recording of this video, the clicky version is sold out, however, the linear version is still on the market. Which is really nice, because while I don't know the brand of the clicky switches, I do know that they're not the same brand used in the linear version. And the linear version uses Gatoron switches. These are Gatoron Reds, and not only are they Gatoron Reds, but they're pre-lubricated, as you can probably make out in this close-up footage. Also, turns out the switches in the original version are Huano switches, and I would assume that's the type of switches used in the clicky edition of the new version. Now, like I said, outside of those differences, these two keyboards are functionally identical. They're both wired mode only, use soldered in switches instead of hot swap sockets, and they have true RGB LEDs. 
Though, as far as I can tell, there's no software control for the LEDs or any of the functions on these keyboards. I can't find anything on the NPET Tech website. It might be compatible with OpenRGB. Though, you might have to code your own drivers for these if they even are looking for PC side control. Outside of that, you're just going to be using the firmware and function layer on these keyboards to control your LEDs. Speaking of the function layer, when you hold down the function key and hit escape, that's gonna be the grave key. And when you hold down function and hit shift and escape, that's gonna give you a tilde. Function plus numbers one through zero will be F1 through F10, while the hyphen is F11 and the equals is F12. Over here on home, you have end, delete is insert, page up is print screen, and page down is pause. Function plus left bracket is going to turn off your LEDs. Function plus right bracket is gonna change the color of your LEDs. And function plus backslash is going to change the mode of your LEDs. Over here on the arrow keys, function plus up is gonna increase your LED brightness. Down is gonna decrease your LED brightness. Left is gonna decrease your LED speed. And right is going to increase your LED speed. And speaking of the arrow keys, when you hold down function and hit W, that's going to swap your arrow keys with your WASD keys. And they'll stay like that until you hold down function and hit W again. For those of you wondering about the other symbols over here on the number row, if you hold down function and hit the control key, that's gonna switch you to multimedia key mode. In this mode, when you hold down function and hit one, that's going to launch your media player. Two will decrease your volume. Three will increase your volume. Four will mute your volume. Five will stop the playing track. Six will go to the previous track. 7 will be play pause, 8 will go to the next track, 9 will launch your email software, 0 will take you to your home page, the hyphen will be scroll lock, and the equal sign will launch your calculator. Last but not least, if you hold down function and hit the Windows key, that will lock the Windows key. If you do want Windows key functionality back, just hold down function and hit it again. And there you have the NPET K61, a little 65% mechanical gaming keyboard that is, as of the recording of this video, selling for under $20. And in my opinion, at that price, it is a steal, especially when you take into account that originally this version launched at around $30 for the Red Switch version. 
which I can understand due to the fact that they're using Gatoron switches that are pre-lubricated. It does seem like there's a bit of a shakeup in the mechanical keyboard world right now, and keyboards like this are starting to level out in the $20 to $25 range. Now, I think I've said pretty much everything there is to say about this keyboard and then some, but if you are intrigued by the K61, I'm gonna go ahead and leave an Amazon affiliate link down in the description as well as in a pinned comment. And on that note, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.